like to thank Civic Hall, this beautiful space that we are in, uh, New York's new home of civic technology. I encourage you to check out their website and check out their membership plans. You can join for as little as $10 a month and um, get to attend member-only events and have a, access to a really cool newsletter. We also like to thank our sponsors, Code for America, Microsoft, and Acela, um, who have been very generous and have helped fund um, Beta Talks, Hack Nights, and all of our events. Um, when uh, we're not hanging out together in person, you can hang out with us on the web. We have a discussion forum, talk.beta.nyc, and a community data portal, data.beta.nyc, and our projects page, projects.beta.nyc. So for those of you who don't know, Beta NYC is a civic organization dedicated to improving the lives uh, in New York through technology, data, and design. Uh, sometimes this is written in a few different ways. Um, it just depends upon the scribe that's put it up there. But uh, our essence is that we are here as a community organization to figure out how to use these three things, technology, data, and design, to improve the lives here in New York. We don't care about citizenship. We don't care about nation of origin. We just want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to move themselves up. Um, and so we do this through um, how do we do this? We do this through programs, tools, and advocacy. And at the core of those three things is the notion of being in a safe space. And so, um, as I pointed out, you have Lauren, you have myself, you have Dirk, you have John, you have Lucio, and you have Martin. Anyone, you can come to any one of us um, if you have any particular issue at all. We are a non-discriminatory organization. We fundamentally believe that that is at our core. Now, how we build on top of that is that we look at that as, an, uh, as a framework to bring in government into this particular conversation. We bring government and we bring in other stakeholders to come in to have this conversation. We're not looking for any type of discrimination to be outright. Maybe some ideas are not as inclusive as others, but we recognize that everybody has a place in this particular society and we want you to come through those doors and we want to at least talk to you about it and particularly think, maybe convince you that a more inclusive ideology is a much better way to go about it. Sorry if this is a, 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 a little bit of theatrics, but this is fundamentally our philosophy of how we want to bring New York up. And so um, I want to talk this evening uh, a little bit about our structure in 2016. So we're going to talk about the leadership. We're going to talk about some of the programs. Um, we're going to talk about one of the tools that, um, that we're working on. Actually, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the tools that we're working on. And then we're going to end on the future of events um, and how we're looking at the structure uh, of events. And so um, before I continue on all of this, I have to say right now we're a completely volunteer-based organization. Um, uh, everyone has full, more or less full-time jobs or part-time jobs in other locations that they, that they get paid to do work. I'm the executive director, but I'm scraping money from other pr particular of uh, my, my part-time job to do this as a full-time job. Um, I hope to change that over this year. Um, and so, so here's kind of our, uh, uh, our DIY uh, organizational chart. Right now, I'm the top uh, at the executive director, uh, and that's just because I, I, I more or less make all my other jobs subservient to this particular job, though I hope none of my other employers hear that on this particular video. Um, uh, I do, uh, and so I'm looking this year uh, to get funding from pr uh, other resources um, to make this a uh, sustainable position, not only for myself, but for a group of other individuals. Um, right now, uh, we're getting funding, uh, as you saw from the, from the beginning, from Microsoft and Acela. We're getting s some funding from my uh, savings account. Um, I'm privately funded through uh, the uh, data and society to do one of the programs that we're talking about this evening. And then we've also been able to secure a $50,000 grant from the Fund for the City of New York to turn this into a much larger operations. Um, so uh, we have a board of advisors. 
um, which uh, are kind of our board in waiting. Hopefully they will turn into uh, a group of people that can help catalyze Beta NYC into the 21st century and have some revenue streams. Um, if we have some staff, when we get some staff, uh, they'll be up there. At, but for right now, uh, the meat of the organization is the uh, left-hand side, which is the board of advisors, and then a number of working groups that we have. Um, we've established four working groups um, that have been meeting on other Wednesday nights. Um, they're an events working group, which helps establish events like this, um, as well as some of the weekend events that we've been putting on. Um, we have two working groups that are kind of uh, working in tan uh, tandem of each other. Um, it's a DevOps. How many of you know what DevOps is all about? Okay, so for those of you who don't know what DevOps, or for those of you who don't know a term that I use in the context of this, please stop me and ask me. Uh, as I said, we're here about trying to lift people up. So um, DevOps is around development and operations. So those people like Dirk and John and Lucio uh, and Joel, who's around, not around, uh, Mark, who scraped data, um, and put some things around. Who else has been working on, I think that's most of the people that are in this room. Um, um, so more or less keeping our kind of like the lights on for talk, for data, uh, for talk, data, and Citigram, um, as well as some of the other things like Nathan is in that room over there and he's been scraping our, uh, the MTA bus time data because that doesn't have an archival feed. Um, so he's been scraping that and trying to finding the, the differences. Those, some of the people that are keeping that core group together and they're very closely related to our data ops team, which is essentially all the data scrapers that are out there kind of processing data the Lucio's, the Nathan's, um, who else is on some of the data ops? Mark um, is more or less scraping data, processing data, and then putting it up to data.beta. And then our last group is our community projects group, which is something that we're kind of really gonna focus the beginning part on. And this is a group of people who are, whose primary focus is to be vetting community projects to ensure that they have a proper foundation so that way um, they can move forward in a very successful manner. Um, so uh, just to talk, uh, our board of advisors, we have this up on our GitHub page. I don't believe we have this actually on our, on our website, uh, but we do have this on a GitHub website. Um, most of these people are coming from the community um, within the last few years, like uh, Ben Wellington or Aileen. Um, some are open source advocates that have been around for um, a decade, like Aaron. Um, some educators that are out there, like Jesse Braden from the Pratt, uh, uh, Jonathan Askin at Brooklyn Law School, um, uh, Sarah Kaufman at uh, NY, NYU Rudin. Um, we have Dan O'Neill from Chicago, Smart Chicago Collaborative as one of our board of advisors. And effectively this board is here to kind of like head check kind of our operations and to make sure that we're heading in the right direction. Um, and then this is kind of the direction. Um, so we have a number of individuals over the last few years um, that have uh, stood up to run different parts of uh, our volunteer working groups. And so these are the people who uh, I beg um, borrow and steal their time um, to kind of get us moving forward into the next realm. Um, and so all of these people fall into different types of roles. Um, and so we've kind of broken these roles out into three columns. Um, we have leads and a support staff and then beta NYC members. The leads are people who are making a, a, a commitment to making sure that Beta NYC is what it's going to be in the 21st century. Uh, I say 21st century because actually one of my earlier documents is like, I want to make sure that this organization lives beyond me. Uh, that might be bombastic, but at least that's um, a goal. Um, and it's good to have uh, high goals. Um, so I read that in a management book someplace, I swear. Um, 
lofty goals. Um, so uh, the leads are out there to essentially steer the community. Um, they are from the community. These are individuals who have proven themselves, um, who've, who've stepped up and said, I want to do something uh, uh, for the community. And so as I said, we're a volunteer-based organization, um, and we're going to continue to ensure that we have these leads. They primarily are vent uh, developer project outreach and advocacy. Um, how many of you know some of the crazy advocacy that we've done? Three, four. How many, how many of you know of the city's open data law? How, how, how many of you know uh, what it took to get the city's open data law passed? Huh? <laughs> It took Gail Brewer, uh, so, so, uh, but Gail Brewer needed uh, um, some, um, some many, many, many hands. Um, and so we're one of the many hands that helped get that city's open data law passed. Um, uh, over the last few years, uh, last year in particular, we got the city's uh, city record uh, open, uh, the city record online bill passed. Uh, we helped uh, Ben Kalos, a city council member, also uh, a longtime member of Beta NYC, uh, get that bill pushed through the city council uh, and then help turn the city record into machine readable data. Um, we've also helped uh, ensure that the city's webcasting law um, was in its um, uh, well written. Um, we sit and we testify in front of city council and we kind of work with city council at times as well as as the administration to ensure that our city's laws are done in a well-constructed manner. Um, and so the, the, the roles are people who are essentially going to kind of, they may beg, borrow, and steal their own time uh, to ensure that our community is led well. Um, we have a number of support roles, essentially people who are coming into the community, um, uh, who want to express leadership and want to learn more about and how to, how to lead the community. Uh, and then um, finally, we have our largest group of members, which is the Beta NYC members. Um, and so does anybody have any questions about this? So um, right, so the good question. That kind of goes back to our history. Um, we started off as a meetup where there's no legal entity. Um, we existed for several years uh, as a non-legal entity. I joined Code for America and rebranded what was then our meetup as part of Code for America. And for our last two years, we have been part of Code for America and have uh, a legal agreement um, operating under their 501c3. This, this year and within this month, uh, we're transferring from our fiscal sponsorship from Code for America to the Fund for the City of New York and essentially are bringing everything home here to New York City. And so our fiscal sponsor is going to be the Fund for the City of New York. We're looking to be organized as a 501c3 um, and continue to operate as a... As a um, 501c3 organization, which is uh, a nonprofit organization, nonpartisan, nonprofit uh, organization. Um, I have always had a desire to make sure that this organization is led by the community. And so um, as we look at our structure through 2016, I would like us to explore co op models and co op membership models, and how does that look? Um, in for the future. I want this to be a community-based organization that is driven by the community. It shouldn't be driven by any cult of personality. Um, you know, our values should drive the fights that we're, that we're working toward. And so I hope that over 2016, we can kind of have that breathing space to think about how do we operate. Um, I forgot to include a slide around our, our kind of the business model. The business model of Beta NYC Hey, well, we'll have programs. How about that? Um, so the business model of Beta NYC is broken up into four parts. Um, the four parts are a uh, an academy, which is more or less um, a civic tech um, general assembly-like organization, a part of Beta NYC that operates to create uh, educational platforms to continue our the work that we're doing. Um, 
a portion of that is a fellowship program where we put this education to use inside of government as well as to other nonprofit organizations. Uh, a small uh, consulting arm within that infrastructure that's able to do fee-for-service work. And then lastly, the community, which is a part that feeds the other three elements of the, the business model. So community members are taking classes, community members are fellows or mentors, community members are also being able to move over and to do fee-for-service work. And so uh, ideal, you know, idealistically, uh, if you're a, this is yet to be discussed, but idealistically, if you're a paid member of the co-op um, and you, or the co-op, right, you can enter into an agreement with the consulting part of Beta NYC and be able to get paid for the work that you're doing. Like that's the ideal version, or at least an ideal version of what I'd like to see Beta NYC mature toward, and that's the ba that's the business model that I've been writing writing up. Uh, yes, Jolly. Just on following up on fellows, the co for all meeting. I remember the, was it the Hong Kong people, but they talked very much about how they got government and industry to place fellows within paid fellows within their groups within their brigades, which actually was a good way of funding because they, you know what I'm talking about? So uh, thank you for, um, uh, that's not a really, yes, I know what you're follow, uh, yes, I know what you're talking about to answer your question. So yes, uh, and that's a great way for me to segue into uh, talking about kind of like the first intervention uh, that we're working toward. And so I'm really glad that Miranda's here, so that way she can start writing about this a little bit publicly, a little bit more than um, the emails that I've been sending her. Um, Mar by the way, Miranda is one of our city's greatest journalists. Uh, she's one of the city's greatest reporters who's been covering civic tech for multiple years. And I know that she's blushing right now, but uh, without her, uh, we wouldn't have our community as well documented and we wouldn't have uh, our ecosystem as well documented as it is. And so it's, um, she's a very shy person, but she's a really great person to have within this community. So Miranda, thank you. Um, uh, so this is something that I'm very glad to be here to talk about this evening. Um, we're in week six of the New York City Civic Innovation Fellows. If you go to this GitHub repository, you'll find the curriculum that we're actually working toward um, and working off of. Uh, effectively, we looked at the Code for America Fellowship model. We worked, looked at what great organizations like Coalition for Queens ha, have, have done. We looked at what general, the education that General Assembly has done. Uh, you know, uh, um, Dev Boot Camp, we were, uh, we were graciously hosted in 2014 out of Dev Boot Camp in Manhattan. We've kind of looked at these different models and we're trying to understand how do we inject that same uh, ideas and concepts into, uh, in, into government. And so the New York City Civic Innovation Fellows is our intervention um, into the civic engagement ecosystem. We're targeting uh, Manhattan community boards. Uh, uh, over the next year, we're, work we're targeting Manhattan community boards. We're working with Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer. Uh, she has dedicated staff members out of her office uh, and she has coordinated with the uh, uh, CUNY Service Fellows Program, where we have 11 undergraduate students from the CUNY program that are paid for by CUNY. We get them 12 hours a week. They're paid somewhat of a living wage at $12 an hour. Um, and we are educating them right now on how to become a civic hacker. This education is a prototype of the education that we want to start offering to the community. Um, and we're figuring out like, how do we turn this into a concrete curriculum as a boot camp, as all these other organizations have, have effectively proven, how can we turn this into a concrete boot camp that we can offer you, for those of you who have never come to a, a Beta NYC hack night before, how can we provide you scholarships? How can we provide you an opportunity to learn about really the New York City's open data program, the concrete elements, how we want our community to work, which is through Slack, uh, GitHub, and, and Discourse, which is the tool that powers talk, um, kind of the, the process that exists on top of that, as well as provide you a civic education. 
And so how many of you know what a community board is in New York City? Raise your hand. So about a third of you. Um, a community board is your hyper-local civic hall or city hall. Uh, it's your town council. Uh, it is your community council. It is comprised of 50 dedicated volunteers who have been nominated by your borough president. How many of you know what a borough president is? Just about the same number of people. So a borough president is, so New York City is an amalgamation of five counties, right? Each one has a county executive. Each county executive is a borough president. Each borough president oversees these community boards. These community boards effectively oversee three things that are chartered by, um, uh, that, are, that are chartered by the city's, that are by the city's charter. Ugh, sometimes I get tongue tied, excuse me. Um, so the first thing is that they're there to oversee gov uh, uh, government service delivery. So they are there to make sure your potholes are fixed. Um, that if you have problems with Medicaid, Medicare issues, if you have problems with transportation, if there's trash in the neighborhood, they're the original 311, right? And so community boards exist as a civic function of community volunteers who are passionate about solving your neighborhood problem. They also have two other responsibilities. The second one is to then take all of that information and give it back to the city council and to say, city council and mayor, we need to have these new resources coming to our community to take care of the problems that our community has discussed. The third thing is that they're in charge of land use and they oversee land use development. So whether you want a park, whether you want an apartment, whether you want to see new residential construction, if you want luxury construction, like uh, um, if you want liquor stores, if you want massage parlors, these are the things that feed through the community boards. They are ultimately the first step in this broader process of our agency within the city. And so the New York City Civic Innovation Fellows are 11 undergraduate students who are just getting their professional start in technology, who we're training to essentially partner up with Manhattan community boards and to use 311 data and to use some off the shelf uh, civic hacking tools to hopefully improve that particular process. One of our goals is um, not only to have a documented um, set of user stories, so that way you can be building apps and hacks uh, to improve community board operations. Another w one of our goals is to actually develop metrics for community boards, so that way we can increase community engagement around community boards. And lastly, it's we want to just improve their digital footprint. So. Um, uh, this has been, we've never had a flagship program like this before, and so this is something that I'm really dedicating all of our time, and I'm really looking forward to get as many resources as possible. And over the next few years, I want us to scale from um, Manhattan, I, um, as, as small as we are, um, to then uh, hit all the different boroughs. I want us to have mentors because I feel that this is the greatest opportunity to be pulling in the next generation of, of community leaders and civic hackers. Uh, most people who participate in community boards, they find their way because these are the, you know, these are the 1% of the 1% of civic, of, of civic engaged. These are the people who end up becoming civic, city council members. These are the ones who end up becoming agency uh, 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 commissioners. Like these are the people that we want to be affecting change, right? So how are we going to get to them? Well, let's get them while, while they're working in community boards and let's show them the value of technology data and design so that way we can affect that change later on. It's a little bit of a long tail game, but this is the long tail game. Um, so in 2016, events, you want me to? You want me to keep on going? Okay, all right. All right, whew. Um, so uh, Lauren did the slide. Uh, I'm surprised that my hacks um, came out as straight as they did. Um, they were a little bit crazy. I'm gonna take this thing here. Um, so we're just starting here in the month of November. Hopefully, Jolly, I'm not screwing you up. Um, so in the month of November, um, we're entering into a traditional holiday season where um, we have uh, fewer opportunities to host events 
Um, we're using this opportunity as a time to rethink how we want to do future community events. Uh, we've done some tests like we did um, with our CityGram Saturday. We've done some tests around our hack nights um, in, in regards to leadership hack nights. And we're, we want to be more effective in our public events. And so um, we're gonna use this kind of holiday season to wind some things down and to restructure so that way we can wind things back up um, at, in spring and then through summer. So um, in November, we have uh, a beta talk that you're at tonight. Um, we're waiting for confirmation from a few other partners um, uh, to have a hack night, hopefully on the 18th, because next Wednesday is Veterans Day. We're looking to then pick things back up on a hack night here. Um, we're, we're looking to centralized hack nights so for right now it looks like for 2016 we're going to be here at civic hall um we have good friends over at carter db in bushwick how many of you are out in brooklyn uh or live on the l train let's see not so many because i'm sure everybody's like i gotta figure out how to fight the l train to get home anyway um so we're we may have some satellite hack nights over at uh, uh carter db in bushwick um, for those of you, how many of you are into maps? This is, how many of you love maps? Not everybody's hand goes up. Oh, all right. So for those of you who love maps, um, uh, we have a, a complimentary Civic Hack Night um, done by our brothers and sisters uh, at Map Time, which is also part of GONYC. Hopefully you all aren't falling asleep on me. But anyway, we're looking to do things out in, in uh, Bushwick um, over the next year. So, all right, starting with this calendar. The idea is that we want to kind of streamline our workflow. And Lauren, slap me if I'm doing this incorrectly. Um, all right, so, um, so we want to streamline our workflow where we want to be able to be soliciting ideas. Uh, we then want to use this uh, event, the School of Data Hackathon, which is the beginning of March, uh, to present ideas. We then want to be able to use the spring and the summer time period to work on them. Uh, and then we're organizing uh, as part of a National Day of Civic Hacking, which, is, which would be our fourth annual National Day of Civic Hacking, um, which is when the, the entire United States gets up and starts civic hacking and present it sometime in June. Um, and then we want to uh, effectively every single month use beta talks as a way to do kind of like a heartbeat where people can kind of check in on the different projects and present people's projects. Um, and then we'll be using hack nights themselves as an opportunity to be able to engage and work on those projects. We really want to turn hack nights into nights where people are working and not just socializing. And that's one of the biggest feedbacks that we've gotten um, over the, the last few months. Um, in the next uh, month or so, um, we actually have uh, an event that's gonna um, be uh, announced within the next two days or so. It's Hack for Heat, um, which will be on December 5th. So uh, save the date. Um, we, that's a Saturday that's going to be looking at heat and hot water issues um, that are effectively building tools and solutions uh, for people that are experiencing the fact that they're in a crisis situation in the middle of winter. And so this is a, um, a, a, a one day hack day dedicated to looking at the data, looking at, da at solutions so people can kind of, in, um, uh, we can get prepared for, the, for this particular winter. Um, we're looking to do an event um, the following week uh, with Silicon Harlem, um, which is our brothers and sisters uh, on this island up north. Um, and they want to talk about uh, civic tech and civic engagement and how do we actually use this to address our community problems. And then starting in January, and hopefully um, every uh, 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 once a month, we'll be doing uh, beta talks with our focal point in March being a School of Data Hackathon, and then in June, the National Day of Civic Hacking. What am I missing? Yeah, okay. Um, so for future hack nights, um, this is something that we're, uh, Dirk 
and Frahin are going to be figuring out, and we'd like some other people. So we want people to kind of be presenting projects, and like we want project teams to develop to effectively work on projects. How many of you worked on big apps this year? Not that many of you. Wow. OK, so big apps kind of had a, uh, they, they hacked around with their schedule. Um, we're going to try to be more concrete. Um, and so future hack nights, um, it's not going to be as open. We're going to use beta talks as that as an opportunity to be more open. School of Data will be a conference in March um, where we will effectively amplify all of the work that people are doing, kind of be as a big megaphone to advertise the projects that people are working on or the projects that people have worked on and the process it's taken to get those projects developed. So that way we have um, um, libraries to pull from so that way people who are working on future projects know exactly how those things are going to be working on. And the National Day of Civic Hacking is traditionally in, in uh, June or so. Um, and we're trying to figure out exactly how that will play into our yearly uh, heartbeat. Um, so great, now I can finally stop talking, which I'm sure you all are excited about, uh, and move on to tools. And so um, the first things, how many of you use Talk? How many of you know about Talk? Okay, so about a third. Uh, Talk is one of the single greatest resources that we've invested in. Um, it's where uh, the city's civic hacker community kind of is, is coalescing. We have great locations um, that are throughout the city. City Civic Hall happens to be one of them. Uh, some of them are paid memberships, so the only way that you can get through their front door is that you have to pay. We've created Talk as an open, safe space for anybody to come in and to have conversations around a number of different issues. This platform is intimately tied with our community data portal, data.beta.nyc, which is uh, built on CCAN. Both of these tools are completely open source, so that way we can hack on them. Uh, and uh, data.beta.nyc is sponsored and hosted by Antidia. Uh, great friends who have effectively uh, proven the awesomeness of CCAN. And uh, for those of you who have any issue with a data file, it actually creates a conversation thread on talk, which is to address this whole other issue, which I'm realizing was probably too nuanced to talk about right now. But effectively, it creates a, a lively and living conversation around every single data set. Um, so, these are two tools that our DevOps team is working on. A third tool that we have been dedicating ourselves to is Citigram. Um, and so we have the developer leads of Dirk and Farheen. Um, and Citigram is one of the three primary data tools that we have that essentially humanizes the city's open data. And so um, was it last weekend? weekend. Two. two weekends ago. Uh, about 12 of us got together um, to add a bunch of data sets to Citigram, and I'm going to let Dirk come up here and talk about Citigram uh, and give a quick recap. Yeah. CCAN is an open source data uh, management tool. C as in the letter cat. Yeah, yeah you got that, everybody? Uh, uh, K A N, like the guy in Star Wars. Star Trek. Star Trek. That's another joke. That was the second joke. Huh? Uh, thanks. Um, so as Noel said, uh, my name is Dirk Kelly. Um, I work on Citigram NYC, which we saw previously. Citigram NYC is our version of an open source tool called Citigram, which was created by uh, Code for America Fellows uh, last year. We have our own implementation of it. and. What the purpose of it is, is that you go to Citigram NYC, you choose what topics you're interested in, you specify where you live or where that is important to you, and you can sign up to get weekly email notifications or real-time SMS notifications, which is like 24 hours later. The whole point of it is to subscribe to what's interesting to you in New York City. Um, before two weeks ago, we had three feeds. Uh, you can see up here we had actually the ones in color so we had restaurant inspections, 301 service requests, and vehicle collisions. 
311 service request is definitely our most useful data feed, but it's huge. I mean, everything goes through 311, right? I don't know if you've used it, but that would mean that you would subscribe to, say, your school or your home, and you just get flooded with everything about 311 that was going on. So we wanted to break that up. We wanted to make it more useful to people. We wanted to get the community involved in pulling apart that data set to create feeds that we may well have not thought of anyway. And the way that we did that was we had an event called Citigram Saturday. The point of it was that we would get people who had already been somewhat engaged in data or open source work. They had knowledge of GitHub. They had knowledge of maybe knowledge of the open data set, but at least an interest in pulling apart that three on one data set to make it more useful. So uh, why did we did it? Why did we, why did we did it? Uh, why did we do it? So we wanted to increase awareness of Citigram. It's a useful tool, but really the use, we want to increase the usage. We also want to increase the awareness that it's an open source tool. It's not owned by anyone. People can come along, be involved, understand the data, and then implement their own feeds. We wanted to introduce people into how to do that, educate them about how to do it. So we ran the course as a learning session. And ultimately, we wanted to get those people to make Citigram more useful for New Yorkers. The end goal was that hopefully we get people who would come back again, who would see it as something interesting and would be like, I think I could give some time to Citigram NYC. Now, knowing whether it worked is like right here. We've got two people who, were, who did come and attend, and both of them were involved. So we've got Ray and Jerry, George. I'm sorry, man. Gordon, Gordon. Both of these guys. Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, and your name? Jason. Jason. So we had like 12 people overall, and we taught them how a feed works, what a feed was. We went through the open data portal, and we decided like what we wanted to work on. Um, did we succeed? Well, we added these six new data feeds, which in my opinion is a huge success. To get six of them out, yeah. Um, this just ultimately makes that through on one data set, which is really unmanageable and not really useful as a big chunk, much more important. So potholes, we have a lot of talk. A lot of us are cyclists. Not a lot of us are drivers, obviously, but you know, we sit in cabs. Um, and then everything else. You know? So the point was, I can't decide what's right for New York, and I don't want to either. You know? I just wanted to understand how the tool works so that I could teach others how to use it. So we had six new data feeds, five new users introduced to Citigram, so people who'd never used it before. We were able to simplify, yeah, we were able to simplify the tool set. So throughout the day, the, the code that we expected people to write, we were like, this is a bit complicated. Maybe as a team we can work together to make it better, to refactor it. We did a group session on a pull request. I'm not sure if people here have GitHub experience. But the point of GitHub is that it's ultimately a social network for code. So we work together as a team to pull in new code, to upgrade Citigram and make it better. And we also were able to upgrade to the latest Socrata feeds. So we don't own the data that we push out through Citigram. What we do is we use these open data sources. And we were able to upgrade to the latest version, which gave us a lot of new features, again, on the fly in a room full of 12 people. So Yes, I'm very happy with the results. I think that it was a good example of how we can run sessions that teach people about the tools that we have. I think there's a lot of ways that we can improve it. Um, yeah, so what were our challenges? Well, the morning of, so Noel and I turned up about 9 o'clock on a Saturday morning. And of course, the data feed that we were going to use was offline, because that's exactly what happens when you're running an event. So Noel jumped on Twitter and made sure that gets, got sorted out, but that was a source of stress. The original database that we then got back online had such an old API that we couldn't use it to do what we wanted to do. So we then had to go back and go, okay, well, we can't use this, so what else have we got? So we ended up getting a new data feed. Um, we had people choose empty data feeds, which was unfortunate, but it's just a name of the game. The point of Citigram is that it's meant to be real-time events. So you might go into the open data feed and pull up something really interesting, and then you go to present it today when we're talking about Citigram, but there hasn't been any nuclear spills or anything like that today. So you can't prove that it's working right now, but we all really want to know about it. So that was a challenge, but it was an interesting thing to overcome. We had an interesting issue with icon licenses. So we sent everyone to just go and get a free icon and attach it. You know, it'll be easy. Just get it off the internet. And then we came up with licensing issues. Ray ended up buying one of our for $2. You know, like it was all, ah, what are we going to do? But we solved it. Um, but the biggest thing was that you know, we had these people who'd never played with Citigram before, and as a developer and as a user myself, like I'm aware of the usability issues, but watching someone who's never seen it before, it's great to get that kind of first user experience, watch them struggle with it, and go, yeah, I see these pain points in the system. Uh, so that was a challenge, but also it's great, because seeing user testing is a fantastic way to improve software. 
Um, so what did we learn from it? We probably could have had more people, but I'm glad that we didn't. You know, it's a first time event, so you don't really want to overrun it. Uh, but we could have run it more people, especially if we'd done pairing. So pair programming, pairing is a term whereby rather than you being the developer sitting there doing it all on your own, you work with someone else, you share the same computer, you share the problems, you talk through it together. One person's typing, the other person's thinking, you're both talking, you're collaborating. We had enough experienced people for the day that we could have done pairing. Uh, we didn't, which was fine, but I think next time I would because I think it creates a better room for education rather than it being a class-led thing. You can have one-on-one -on -one sort of consultation about what's going on. It can help people learn, fix things easier, that sort of thing. Um, the next focus for our event probably doesn't need to be on data feeds. I think we've learned enough about what we can fix about those for now before we run the next one. But it needs to be about usability. Um, we're not sure how we're going to do that. We can't obviously like have everyone in a room on a Saturday morning and do a bunch of like user consultation. But what I'd like to do is come up with a plan for how we can get designers, UX specialists, data specialists to help us improve the usability of Citigram NYC. Um, and yeah, ultimately, Citigram needs more work, which it's a volunteer-run project, so that's always going to be the case. But knowing where that work needs to happen is what's important. So will we be doing more Citigram Saturdays? Yes, absolutely. Um, it was really fun. I really enjoyed it doing it. I hope people that went got a lot out of it. I didn't send a user survey. should have sent a user survey. Um, but we will do more events. And I will be at more of these beta talks and more of these hack nights. And as Noel's saying, it's kind of a way for us to understand what the community wants, get people drawn into these projects, so then when we run these Citigram Saturdays or when we have hack nights, we've got explicit work to produce, and we've got ways to get people involved in the community and actually like having a result of their participation. Not just, I went to this meetup, but I went to this meetup and I changed the internet in this way, which I think is really exciting. Um, that's all I had to say. I don't know if anyone has any questions about Citigram Saturday. Yep. We have somewhere like 700 email subscribers and 150 SMS subscribers. And that's totally drawn from the worst memory ever. But it's around that number. Um, we want to do a lot more around our analytics and a lot more around letting the public know what's happening. Let them see how the tool's growing, how people are utilizing it. So there's a lot of discussion around how can we analyze our own data inside City Ground, inside Beta NYC now that we've started collecting it. Great question, though. Ray. Beyond, um Creating new sub data sets. Yep. Um, what other goals do you have for Citigram uh, Account management. So at the moment you subscribe to a data feed and you say where you live and you put in your email address and then welcome to that single user experience where you're going to get that email every week. I get 12 of them every week. Um, I would like to get one. I would like to be able to manage what I have on and off. Uh, that's definitely a, an important feature, I think. Uh, there's talk about not just having radiuses, you know, like if I'm interested in potholes, actually Knowles, this is Knowles' user story. Knowles interested in potholes in the terms of his commute from his home in Brooklyn to his work in Manhattan. So he can't specify a radius of where he's interested in potholes, that's not useful information to him. So is there more work that we can do in terms of map usability and more specific data collection about like what people want to know? So it's all wrapped around that user experience. Now that we've got a working model of getting the notifications out, how can we help the user control that information, have more insight into what they're getting? And yeah, I think that's it. Anything else? Data visualization. Oh, that'd be lovely. I just can't wait to get some UX people, some data visualizers, all those sort of people on it. So that's definitely my goal for 2016. Hack nights have been an opportunity for me to come along and say, hey, I kind of work on Citigram. I want to turn that more into, hey, I work on Citigram. We have these specific stories. We have these specific issues that we're working on right now. Does anyone have this skill set? Sit with us, work with us for the next two hours. Hopefully, we get something out. Maybe I can engage you enough that you're going to do some work at home as well. Just get people involved. So data visualization would be beautiful. But we're not there yet. One thing I've seen people use recently more often is the barometer, just which shows you know, it's just a simple metric. It's just basically a visual of the, the barometer to show how much is, you know, going on. Pressure. Yeah. Know. I mean, come come hang with us. That'd be yeah. great. <laughs> cool. All right. I think that's it. Thanks for listening to my voice.
So um, before I get into some questions, I want to give some feedback from my particular perspective. Um, and then I'm going to hand it off to Lauren, and then we'll, we'll kind of engage into the community uh, conversation. Um, so um, my first, my takeaway with the CityGram Saturday is that we are part, we, we, we are not alone. Um, um, we are part of a global community of civic hackers, and civic hackers is a very nebulous term, um, um, and uh, that are using all of the tools within our, um, um, our tool chest, um, every one that we can think of, uh, to improve the lives um, of our neighbors. And so when I look back at our mission statement, of that we are kind of in the service of, uh, we are a community organization um, in the service of improving all lives in New York through technology, data, and design. Uh, I want our 2016 to essentially articulate that. And, and, and through that, we sit with uh, our friends, as Jolly said, through Code for All, um, as we are collectively as part of the Code for America Brigade community um, there are thousands of others that are out there who do this on a weekly basis. And so I want to make sure that our structure uh, is organized and oriented in such a way that we can take some of the best applications that are made in other locations and redeploy them like CityGram, and then hopefully be in a position where we're creating some of the best applications that are out there that can then be redeployed in other locations. And so um, we've done so by demonstrating that communities uh, like, uh, like ours through um, as part of the Code for America Brigade, can use discourse and can use CCAN as a uh, data sharing tool. Um, so our contributions are being shared out at a national level uh, or international level. And then also, we're taking the best apps that are out there, like CityGram, and incorporating them and distributing them here uh, domestically. I hope we can do some of the similar stuff around crash data. Um, our brothers and sisters, some of them upstairs and some of them over here through the Microsoft Civic Tech team are thinking through like how do we ensure that once crash data is out there that we can build applications that's, um, that are easy to deploy in other locations. Um, we get constant requests from council members and other members of uh, New York City government on like can we build an app for them and I want to make sure that we have a process for that. Uh, because year after year, we get more and more requests to help solve different problems, but I want to make sure that we're solving those particular problems or tackling those problems in the right way and that we're not just doing a, a fire hose. And that's kind of like what Beta NYC wants to focus on. But we also want to be a community that allows for you as a community member to be bringing in your project and be solving your particular problem, scratching your own itch. And so this is what we're gonna try to figure out in 2016. Um, and we're gonna try to use the things that we're best at, which is really community organizing and events organization our relationship with city government to solve problems like when the NYC 311 feed is down on, at 9 a.m. on a Saturday. How do we get that back up and running so our apps are work, working? Um, we want to be able to sit on those things. We want to be able to bring others into the community while or through our uh, fellowship program and expand that fellowship program so that way it creates concrete educational opportunities to kind of to, to really, not kind of, to demonstratively grow our community in a way that we can all enjoy. Um, and then lastly, we want to be able to improve our neighborhoods. So um, it's a kind of a, just a, a concern that we have. Make sure that we, we don't do um, uh, discriminovation as uh, a term that I, a hashtag that I sometimes use. Uh, discriminovation, if you can say that quickly enough, um, which is essentially uh, we've seen apps over the last few years 
that in, enable people to express their bias. And that's just not what we want here in New York City. Um, and so we wanna be able to truly create ladders of opportunity for all of us. Um, and those are the things that we're looking to do in 2016. And with that, um, I want to be able to use this as a Q&A session um, and get your feedback on the things that you've seen. You can be hypercritical. Um, we can stop the video and stop the recording so that way, uh, and, and if you have an off the record comment that you wanna save with the two journalists that are in the room, uh, please feel free. Uh, but this is really uh, an opportunity to take the gloves off um, and to, to talk about this. So before we do that, yes, Jolly? Uh, on advocacy, you talked about previous advocacy. What do you have current and future in terms of advocacy? Um, well, this is something that we did um, uh, the election year, um, the, the year that ended up with Bill de Blasio uh, winning that November. So what was that, 2013? So we spent 2013 uh, writing up our idea of a digital New York City that uh, took apart the three roadmaps that, that the, the Bloomberg administration put together that Rachel Hout uh, helped an initiate, instigate, uh, and glue together, strap together, and, and kind of calcify where we were then. Uh, this is kind of a, a community-driven vision. Um, some may say that it is a, um, a manifesto that kind of puts us where we are. Uh, it brings together our, uh, our ideas of the freedom to connect, the freedom to innovate, the freedom to learn, and the freedom to collaborate, which is our four freedoms that are kind of based at our uh, values. This document outlines 32 policy points that could move in any one direction or another. Uh, about a third of them have been addressed. Um, a third of them are addressed in a favorable way. About a third of them are, are under deliberation. And about a third of them have yet to be addressed in a way that um, we would like them to be addressed, would be the nice way to put it. Um, kind of another advocacy, we are part of Beta NYC. When I say we, I mean Beta NYC. Beta NYC is part of the New York City Transparency Working Group. Uh, and we continue to push for um, reforming our freedom of information on, uh, freedom of information law, which has been our traditional way of data liberation. Uh, it has been 926 days, roughly 21 hours and 24 minutes since then public advocate Bill de Blasio asked for freedom of information law reform. Um, and so we just keep this up here as a, um, as a clock um, of kind of reminding ourselves of what the mayor kind of promised he would do as the public advocate and what some of us elected him to do. Um, and we're still waiting. Um, you know, there's huge opportunities around ensuring that our uh, community boards have the resources um, around New York City 311, the NYC 311 program, uh, making sure that the 311 program is um, modernized in a way that allows for bi-directional APIs so that way we can create applications and we can create businesses um, that actually feed the improvement of our city. Uh, that then goes to making sure that kind of agencies are looking at that data and they're using that data effectively, which is kind of where we sit with the Civic Innovation Fellows, trying to be that, that uh, rubber on the road um, uh, uh, element. So, you know, we're gonna work quietly because we wanna work with government uh, and we wanna push them in the right direction. Uh, and we wanna use our brothers and sisters, uh, particularly our older brothers and sisters through um, the Transparency Working Group to make sure that our advocacy is effective. Um, uh, but, we're, you know, in some ways we're, we're just gonna be here and keep on doing what we're doing. So that's kind of the advocacy things that we're coming out. And I'm totally open to us coming up with a, a report card today, DNA Info put out a report card that talked about, that would 
not give this administration a favorable grade when it comes down to freedom of information law requests. I think that there's an opportunity for us to evaluate what has gone on over the last two years of this administration and make sure that we put out a sextant and say we want to go in this particular direction, right? We want to be aligned with these particular stars. We have good reports and strategic documents that are coming from Do It, that are coming from MoDA, um, but it's about execution. So hopefully the School of Data NYC is an opportunity that helps MoDA, which is the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics, articulate its goal around open data for all. Hopefully it also helps Do It articulate its strategic goal around making sure that, that there's opportunities for everybody to participate. So. Uh, we kind of, where they're not going in the right direction, we want to make sure that we're pulling or at least pushing them in the right direction. So, other questions? We can do on the record questions now. I know that this is like, this is like a sandbag and then like a big glass of water all at the same time. So, yes. So you said that uh, there's going to be more of a distinction between beta talks and hack nights. Hack nights are going to be more focused on working on projects and getting, doing that kind of stuff. What, is, what does that actually look like in terms of separating the two? Uh, um, so we, we, we have an image of what that looks like. Um, so over the last few weeks, We've had leadership hack nights at uh, Data and Society um, that start at seven o'clock and that go till 10. They kind of go back to where we were uh, two years ago when we were meeting at Blue Ridge in Brooklyn, where it was just three hours of uninterrupted uh, opportunity to just crank on stuff. Uh, some of those nights have been fairly focused and some of them have been unfocused. Uh, we want to kind of tweak them so that way we can figure out how to make sure that they are focused uh, and then either bring that model here um, at Civic Hall where we have all these different conference rooms and uninterrupted space. Um, but we don't know exactly, like we're gonna be prototyping that over the next few months. Um, so we want people who have concrete projects that have um, some of the mission that we've already oriented. So we have a value statement, we have a mission statement for the different projects. If you can articulate those things and you can be up on GitHub and use GitHub issues effectively, like we want to start promoting and using those projects. And so we want to make sure that, you know, like, like this project over here that isn't exactly, this is a bus time project, right? So that isn't exactly within that mode starts adopting um, those different facets. So the project should have GitHub. It should use GitHub issues effectively. Um, uh, if not uh, GitHub issues itself, that it uses waffle.io as an interpretation of, of GitHub. Um, that there's a clear mission statement, that there's a clear project leader, that there are clear project partners, um, that there are clear user stories, that, that all those different pieces are kind of lining up um, in, the, in, in the direction that we want. And we'll be using those hack nights as a very focused hack night, um, so that way those people can come and have an opportunity to just get stuff done. Um, I guess, so those of you who have come in the past, usually to Civic Hall in the last like, year, um, they have been called, oh, sorry. They have been called hack nights, right? Where we have gotten zero work done, right? And we've been listening. So we know that you know we would come, we had to do the introductions, they'd be typically pretty lengthy, get a sense of what everyone's doing, having a good community conversation. But then when it was time to break out, we weren't effectively breaking out into groups and actually getting things done. A lot of that was there wasn't enough projects available for people to work on. So people who are new to the community today, with the expect who came with the expectation to work on something, we couldn't really pair you. We didn't really know what to do with you, you know, and. So we're tackling that by making a very clear distinction and probably using the term hack night more appropriately that when we have a hack night, you will be working. There will be limited community introductions. It will be a small group. It could be here. It could be at a different space, most likely oriented around a conference room table instead of just you know, a space like you know, this where we're all just kind of assembled. It will be a lot more of a formal event. 
um, in the case of Citigram Saturdays, you had to apply beforehand. And applying was simply just stating that you were interested and just agreeing to a few terms, like I'm going to, what were some of the terms that you had? For, GitHub account, you had yeah. to have a GitHub account, um, you had to say your superpower and you had to give your email address, right? But that was enough of like, uh, you A, you had to read the instructions on Meetup uh, and then know you had to go to GitHub to like move things over. Yeah, and, and, so, and you had to show up. So we're hoping that the attendance level um, will be much better because in the case of, I guess, hack nights in the past, we get about like 50% attendance, sometimes 30%. Whereas hack nights or hack days going forward, we expect a much higher level of participation. So they're gonna be a little more serious. But because we apply that structure, we're gonna get a lot more done. And you're gonna come out of the event feeling like you really achieved something. And um, we're gonna really reinstate um, you know, hack nights for you know what they are meant to be. Um, so, I guess Hack Night now, as we've been practicing it the last year, has a new name called Beta Talk. And tonight is Beta Talk, which is kind of has a similar you know, structure to how Hack Nights used to be. We did the community introductions, but we had a set program. And today, I know today's program seemed a little long. There was you know, a lot of like introductions about Beta NYC. But going forward, we'll probably have like, maybe three speakers. Maybe it'll speak for 10 minutes each. And then we'll have an opportunity to network and talk afterwards. Because that's also, and it's a really great way to um, attract people you know, to Beta NYC who've never you know, come to an event before. It's a great way to get introduced. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing going forward. If you, would you mind putting the uh, event sort of calendar up? So we're going to try to have a Beta Talk once a month. And we need your help curating them. Well, we have ideas, but you also have amazing ideas, and perhaps you are working on a project that you want to talk about, or you know somebody who just you know, came up with something, you know, why don't you invite them? For example, right now we're trying to get together um, or organize a beta talk um, centered around City Bike. So we're in conversations with Motivate and maybe some other community stakeholders and other people who are working on projects. And we're trying to curate an event so that we can just talk about that. And hopefully, we're hoping it might be in a few weeks, hopefully November. But if not, you know, it'll be one of the beta talks that are in the future. So if you have any ideas, please let us know. Get on talk.beta.nyc and express them. And because that's essentially how this upcoming City Bike beta talk, you know, that's how it originated. Someone was like, hey, we should totally do one of these. And we're like, yeah, absolutely. We're going to help you. We're going to get, we're going to help organize this. So, um, and then we're going to have larger events, like School of Data. So who went to Code Across last year? I get two people, two people. All right, Code Across is an event, and it's going to be called Code Across. It's a Code for America hackathon weekend, right? So yeah. all the brigades pretty much have a weekend hackathon. So it was done around the country, and last year it was like in the end of February or something. And we had our event here at Civic Hall, and it was over two days. And it was an unconference style where you know you came with ideas. We had probably the longest introduction ever, but it was lovely. It was nice, but it was long. And then we kind of organized ourselves and like you know put you know project you know or topics on a board and you know kind of dispersed throughout the day. This year we want to have it be a lot more structured. So that's again sort of calling out to you guys and identifying projects, identifying ideas that we can discuss during School of Data so that a few weeks ahead of time we can give everyone a sense of what's going to happen. So you can come and know what you're getting yourself into and leave you know, feeling you know, really inspired. We're hoping that at that event we can really define projects. The project should be defined before the event, but we can actually recruit people into those projects and then work on them for the next few months until National Day of Civic Hacking, which will be an opportunity for you to present the work that you've been working on. So that's the direction. Everything kind of relies on projects because we want to start doing stuff. Well, we've been doing stuff, but we want to do stuff better. And we want to get more people involved and we want more structure. We want to we do better. <laughs> so we're going to do better. Um, so, kind of a call to action. 
right now. Um, if you are remotely interested in this community, please get online and join. Make a profile on Talk. Hell, give me your computer. I'll make it for you. But that's really just that's step one. And then check Talk. You know, maybe start once a week and then go every day and then start talking to people and then you'll get notifications. You'll get pulled into things. And that's a lot of that's that's where a lot of things are happening right now. So please get on that. Um, and I think that is probably just the best place to start. Just get on talk and start talking, okay? Um, and talk to us and tell us your ideas for projects. Um, and we're going to try and be better project managers to make sure that these projects are going on continuously and that they're achieving their goals. So with that said, sorry, longest no. answer to a question ever. Any more questions? <laughs> You said that you had requests from some government organizations for help solving problems. Are those somewhere? Can we see them? <laughs> uh, yes and no. Uh, yet, yes, you can see them because, well, no, because I don't have them written up anywhere because they themselves are unstructured, like they're fairly unstructured. Right now we have um, a council member uh, who's looking to have a better understanding of where crossing guards should be across New York City. Um, and the data, the way that they want to evaluate the data, we, d we have holes within the data. So we don't have like school population data, um, uh, or at least it's not easily accessible. Um, and so I'm encouraging them to have a structured request and I'm looking through our network of kind of defined um, people who have been able to work on this type of data in the particular way that they want it and try to do some matchmaking. But uh, my goal over 2015 was to get out of the middle of those type of requests. Um, uh, but yet there still needs to be a bit of evaluation and kind of like an analysis and kind of like the, the um, uh, what is it used within business? It's like a business, you know, like an intake form um, and to evaluate kind of the, the, the business use case um, and then be able to write a user story over it and to kind of go through this, this process of agile development to produce that. And so um, we're trying to build that pipeline so that way there can be clear requests from government and from nonprofit organizations coming in to it. Um, and that's something that Dirk and Fahin are going to be working on with other people like John. Um, and we're going to think that through. Like, uh, when we put up talk, it was about a year ago when we were discussing building talk um, or deploying talk, we kept on coming up against the situation. Um, where we had these clear use cases. If you've participated with big apps, you've seen how kind of the city goes about it. They put out this, you know, moon moonshot idea. We need to use all this tools to solve these problems, and those are really noble problems. Uh, but some of them are even smaller, and so we kind of want to we want to figure out how to build a funnel to catch those smaller requests um, and to effectively put them through a pipeline, so that way the community can work on them and help address them. Like, where do we place crossing guards in New York City? And should we have an algorithm? Because there currently, there is an algorithm if you want to define it that way. It's just, it's a poorly defined algorithm. Um, and it's a, up to a lot of human error. And so can we use a more effective algorithm? Can we help define an algorithm that may involve more discussion and deliberation um, to address where school crossing guards should go? Um, so. That's what we want to do through Hack Nights, um, and we're looking to develop that process. So if you are in the business analysis process, um, or know how to write user stories, or think through of kind of like the design scenarios in through that process, um, we want to engage with you as we build that pipeline. So no problem. Other questions? We're trying to be as open and honest as possible. Yeah. Not sure if this is like a big question for everyone, but uh, so EDC was approached by the Transparency Work Working Group uh, to release some data set for Local Law 62. Um, it's just a data set we currently put in, I think, in like an Excel spreadsheet. 
or something somewhat. Um, What's local law 62? Yeah. Um, no, but what is it? I don't know too much about that side um, on the developer. Um, mm -hmm. And so I was kind of like brought in very, very toward the end of that conversation of what, um, what that transparency group was looking for. But it seems like to me like the requirements and what they're trying to produce might not, uh, it just seems like a little mixed up. So uh, I don't know if you guys uh, are related or tied together. Well, we're members of the Transparency Working Group. Um, and so um, uh, in a weird way, I was staff on reInvent Albany that helped co coalesce the um, Transparency Working Group but I was also organizing the, what was the magma of where we are today, which was the Open NY Forum. If Local Law 62 of 2011, i.e. Local Law 6211, is for the annual investment projects report, if, it, if this is it, versus the boiler report, which is also Local Law 62 of 92, according to Google, um, uh, you know, th this is all about financial transparency. Um, in general, um, municipalities um, struggle to do transparency around, um, have clear financial transparency due to the fact how budgets um, break down over years when you do capital investments. You know, like you essentially have multiple years, multiple budgets. Uh, you know, you have, you know, like you have active budget A, active, active budget B. Um, uh, it's really hard to get into that data. Um, so I can talk to you afterward about like, like what exactly that's looking for, but there's a huge opportunity. New York City can lead the way in regards to fiscal transparency, which is really hard to accomplish um, in general uh, because most people don't have the accounting resources to bring about that type of fiscal transparency, but yet that's where all the dirty deeds are done. Right, and so uh, dirty deeds done dirt cheap. Anybody ACDC fan? No, okay, yeah, I guess the Aussies are. <laughs> uh, um, and so um, uh, we want fiscal transparency because fiscal transparency is like the pinnacle of, uh, of, of, of that. We can see where everything goes. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, this, this, is, this is like, it's one of the holy grails of open government. So. How do we know when Beta NYC is succeeding? Do we have any measurements or metrics or anything we're trying to track that says we've made we've we've one percent of our goal or um I just go by Noel's mood. <laughs> uh I mean so I have a tracker just so like you know, uh, that's our numbers here, membership tracking. This is current. Um, yeah, this is current up until, so like I've been tracking more or less membership back to 2012 in regards to meetup. Um, I need to do this month's numbers um, today, but like I'm tracking active meetup number, I'm tracking meetup members, active meetup members. What's the differential on that? Um, so, so th these are these are our meetup. The, the, these have been our uh, kind of like the core metric numbers, and so it's been about um, engagement, right? Like where we've been and what's the differential from month to month to month, um, from you know Twitter to Tumblr to to like when we depreciated certain working groups, um, m newsletters. Uh, I can see the ISOC trying to, trying to cop some numbers here, but they're recording it, so that way they can just look at the video later. Um, uh, but now the question comes down to, like, what are the metrics based upon um, our, what are the new metrics that we want to base upon our mission, based upon the different programs? And we just haven't had, like, the, liberty to have all the resources to come up with all those different measurements and to hold ourselves accountable um, because different funders have different measurements that they wanted to to measure so i've always been in a position of not having measurements other than just seeing 
what the growth of the community looks like. Um, there are measurements that I hope that we can develop around some of these things um, over time. So. So with regards to his question, big picture, what's the qualitative outcome you're looking for? Okay, so there's four business units, right? I mean, I'm gonna break this down from the, from the business perspective. There are four business units. There's the academy, there's the consulting, there's the, um, the fellowship, and there's the community. And so each one of those verticals has uh, um, a set of outcomes that hopefully are positive every single year. And this is the first year that we actually have um, except for the consulting that we have outcome. Like, we started a fellowship. We've created a curriculum. We continue to have positive attraction within the community. Um, and we've set ourselves up to have a local fiscal agent that can do contracting to, to bring in money, right? Um, so next year, the, the outcomes hopefully are secure contract with the city of New York to actually run some of these events and to get paid by the city to run these and execute these events. Um, develop the academy, strengthen the academy of some sort. Um, have the fellowship program essentially not fuck up um, and not fail. Um, that's a huge success. Define outcomes for community boards so that way they can actually improve their operations and continue to grow the community in an effective way that all of you keep on wanting to come back, bring your friends, and produce cool apps that solve some of the city's problems, or at least address problems that our brothers and sisters are having, either within government or within uh, non-governmental organizations. Yes? Who funds the fund for the city of New York? Uh, the fund for the city of New York is a uh, multi-million dollar uh, organization. Um, they have a, a board that goes out and does fundraising as well as gets money from the city. They are, were chartered by the Ford Foundation in the 1970s. Um, the Ford Foundation wasn't paying city taxes. The city was in a fiscal crisis situation. The fund for the city of New York was essentially created to kind of help um, and bring money from the Ford Foundation into New York City to help develop nonprofits. Um, so they have a number of different programs. One of their programs is called the Partners Program, which is what we're a part of, which is essentially to develop and incubate nonprofits and move them forward within their life cycle. Um, so, but they also help take care of our UPK. Um, the city's UPK program. They fundraise millions and millions, tens of millions of dollars um, to ensure that um, um, kids going into the uh, pre-K system um, essentially had the resources to make sure that they were safe, um, that they were clean, that they were up to code, and that they had the teachers to execute that program. And so the Fund for the City of New York sits as this public, uh, pri uh, it's this private nonprofit um, that is out there to essentially improve the lives of New Yorkers and to use technology as part of that mission, and we're part of that. So who funds it? It's a lot of big, big funders. It's a, it's a, it's like a trust. It like it's not a trust, but it is one of the larger. Um, municipal nonprofits that's designed to essentially build up other nonprofits in the in in the framework. So, I mean, eventually, like our goal, you want to talk about our goals. You want to talk about like what, like funding. Um, over the next three to four years, is that we're in a position where we're our own 501c3, where we have a board, we have sustainable income, and that we can, you know, that we're our own little entity. But just right now, we don't have those resources to do that. So I'll be as transparent as possible um, um, with, the, with the money, as I have been. And if you come and ask me privately, and if you want to give a large donation, I will gladly show you our books. So OK, great. I want to say thank you for everyone that came, in, that came out this evening. Thank you, Martin, for uh, being this your first night uh, checking people in. Thank you, sir. Uh, thanks, Dirk, John. Lauren, Lucio, for Thank being out here tonight to New York. help. Let's give them the a event. round of applause for recording. And thank you for attending.